Hey everyone, I'm your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we have a very special guest. It's been a minute since we've gone live, y'all. This is epic, but I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be doing these lives with you all. We have a very dynamic speaker coming to the stage today. And you won't want to miss what he has to talk about. He's going to be spilling the proverbial tea. Um, You know, that's all we do on this show is spill tea. And we talk about the truth. And no better topic, no better expert than Mr. Brandon coming to you live. So stay tuned. Stay with us. Here we go. Hey everyone, I'm your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today I have Mr. Brandon Joe Williams. This man is extraordinary. He is a state national of California. We're going to dive into what that means on this dynamic episode. But he's also an author of two books, working on his third, uh, and is author of The Common Law. He considers himself a common law lawyer. And he's also the founder of several companies. One of his um, favorite companies is he's the founder of the Amnesty Coalition, a group that aims to address slave state framework. Mr. Brandon and his team are successful in numerous aspects, and he had a successful career in sales and marketing and left corporate America. I love those types of guests when they come on to the show and they're leaving corporate America, right? That is unique in itself. But Mr. Brandon is now devoting his full time work to research and experimentation in becoming a state national and writing his third book on martyrdom and escapism. And he's going to help us today break out of the matrix here today on the show so help me welcome without further ado i can't help but hold this man back mr brandon joe williams welcome welcome to the show mr brandon how are you good man thank you so much it's quite the introduction i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> It's all you, man. I that that is you. You putting in the work. You've been busy, sir. But it is epic to have you here on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and it is a true honor to have you, sir. Diving right in, I, I, I what you left corporate America that just stuck out to me. You left corporate America. That is suicidal by most standards, and and and, and most people wouldn't even conjure. Or think about that. What provoked you to get on the mission trail that you're on today? How did you decide to leave corporate America? What what, what triggered that? Uh, well, le- leaving corporate America, that's kind of an interesting way of putting it. I, I, I've always been um, I've always been someone who works for himself or owns companies or, or something like that. Uh, leaving corporate America, meaning like uh, learning how to exit the corporate structure of America or, or exit the tax system of America, or exit the uh, like the driver's license system of corporate America. I guess that would make more sense to me. But but I, I wasn't like in a corporate job, and then I left a corporate job, something like that. So I guess we can talk a little bit more about like when you say when you say leaving corporate America, what exactly do you mean by that? No, that's fair, and that's right, and that's it. It's so you left the system, right? The system, yeah. The cap, the corporate America system, not necessarily um the traditional nine to five that is also um slave to us all, some of us. Um, but you oh, yeah. left the structure, the the structural that, and and you push against that. You you've devoted and committed yourself to pushing against that. How did you do that? And what inspired that movement? Did something happen? Um, did you notice something in society? Did you notice something in the Matrix. <laughs> what inspired this? Uh, yeah, I, I was being attacked by some government agencies in a company that I had taken over here in California, and um, and people were like, "Just pay them. Just work out a payment plan." And I'm like, you know. It doesn't make sense why I would pay these companies that do nothing for me, do nothing for anyone else. They behave as though they're the, the mafia. It doesn't make any sense that I would pay them any money. So instead of paying them any money, how about I figure out how to not pay them any money? And in fact, how do I figure out how to bill them 
for bothering me. And that was kind of like the, the, the beginning of my journey, I guess you could say. Uh, I was like, there has to be a way that I could not only get out of this, but, but make some money off of these people uh, harassing me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So how, how has that been for you? How has that journey been? Um, because you teach this. You actually talk about this um, in your company and on your website leaving the system, leaving the tax system. How do you legally, how can someone legally never pay taxes again? Yeah. So, so the way that works is, uh, basically the, um, uh, you, 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 you basically, when you, when you have a documentation such as your driver's license, your passport, et cetera, and you have it where you, it says U S citizen on there, U S citizen, U S citizen, U S citizen, what you want to do is uh, you want to go through all of those different documents and all those different things and change your status from U.S. citizen to what's called state citizen slash U.S. national. And when you do that, see, the, the definition of the term United States in law in the U.S. code, what it means is it actually means by definition in black and white in the U.S. code, United States is located inside of the District of Columbia. And that's basically how they've essentially tricked everybody into when you look at a tax form like a W-9 and it says, uh, are you a U.S. citizen or did you make money from within the United States? What they're actually asking you in that question is the legal question is, uh, do you live or reside in the District of Columbia? And have you made any income or money from the District of Columbia? So for most people in America, the answer to that question is no. So what happens is that all you have to do is just say, you know, once you change your status with the Department of State through the passport system, you're changing your status from, from a U.S. citizen to a state citizen. Once you complete that, then you can basically state under oath that you no longer live in the United States because the United States is the District of Columbia. California is not in the District of Columbia. New York is not in the District of Columbia. Montana is not in the District of Columbia. So you're not in the United States as it's defined in the United States Code. Thank, thank you for breaking that down, and thank you for educating us. What's it mean to be a state national? It means that you're no longer you're you're no longer uh, in in the documentation of your citizenship of your nationality. You no longer are a U.S. citizen. You're what's called a non-citizen national. A non-citizen national, by definition, in law is someone who has completely disconnected themselves from Washington, D.C. legally. And basically, it's someone who says, I don't want to be involved with you anymore. I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. I'm not uh, working for you. I'm not withholding any, any taxes for you. I'm not, I don't want to even want to receive really communication from you necessarily. You are basically saying, I am a completely foreign entity, foreign government. And actually, it's funny because if you look up um, uh, Title 18, Section 112, so if you just type into the internet, 18 space USC space 112 and hit enter, Cornell Law University will come up. And uh, that's one of the sections that actually talks about this particular status. Uh, there's different names for the status. One of the names is national of the United States, which means someone who's foreign from the United States. Another term that I found really, really interesting is called internationally protected person. So that's another term. Another term that's used to describe this nationality is foreign government. So you are actually considered a foreign government by law uh, from the United States when you are a state national. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for breaking that down. And I appreciate that you breaking that down so silently. Uh, how, how are you able, how has any of this affected your business and how you operate and how you move through the country? Oh um, yeah. hundred percent. Totally. So, really? so, 
So the way it works is when you're traveling, uh, let's say you're you're driving a car or a motorcycle, something like that. Um, there's two different types of traveling, right? There's there's traveling for non-commerce, meaning you're not making money, like a taxi, and then there's traveling for commerce, which would be like a big rig or uh, a taxi or an Uber, something like that, right? So so when you're traveling privately and you're not involved in commerce actively at that exact moment when you're driving that vehicle you would use your passport and what happens is when you get the four or the five star passport which is this type of nationality that i'm talking about right now and you change your nationality to get your new passport if you use the passport while traveling police cannot detain you or give you tickets on anything that does not contain a victim there has to be a victim. If you hit someone or you smash into somebody or if you, you know, cause a big accident, now you can be detained and you can be prosecuted. But things like speeding, things like driving through stop signs, things like drunk driving, I hate to say it, may not be the greatest thing for most people. But the truth is you can no longer be detained and get tickets based off of these things because you're using two different forms of identification when you travel. One is the driver's license, which is used for commerce purposes. And the other is the passport, which is used for private uh, uh, transport. So, so whenever you're driving, like I don't even carry my driver's license on me in, when I'm in a vehicle unless I'm driving the vehicle for commerce purposes. I only carry the passport, right? So if I know for a fact, oh, I'm going to go and uh drive a dump truck or do you know do something like that then i gotta make sure i grab my driver's license before i leave because i'm going to be involved in commerce during that time when you're involved in commerce it's a completely different set of laws that operate versus when you're not involved in commerce and the problem is the problem in this country is that what they're doing is they're trying to make everything that you do in your entire day commerce even when it's not they're trying to make it as though it is everyone thinks a driver's license is something that you just get so you can drive a car that's not what a driver's license is at all you don't need a driver's license you just need a passport to drive your own private automobile and you can get a passport at 12 13 14 11 years old so technically legally uh, you can start driving a, a vehicle at a very, very much younger age than what most states will allow people to drive. You just have to do it in a different way. Uh, you have to register your vehicle in a different way. You have to do some other things in a different way. But uh, basically, uh, a driver's license, you, you are, when you carry a driver's license and when you present a driver's license, what you're doing when you present that license is you're saying, I'm involved in commerce right now. Here is my license to practice commerce. Here you go. That's what you're doing. When you hand someone a passport, what you're doing is you're saying, I am involved in private non-commerce. This is my identification for private non-commerce. Here you go. And when you do that, you're in two completely different worlds, depending on which one you choose. Thank you. Thank you for breaking that up. That this is huge, Mister. I told y'all, Mister. Brandon Williams, y'all spilling the tea. Speaking of commerce, we have to go to a short commercial break. We gotta pay some bills um, that we didn't bring our passport for. We will be right, right back. If you're looking for a reliable, professional trucking and logistics service, you've come to the right place. Musa Trucking is a veteran-owned and operated premier transportation provider that can help with all of your trucking and logistics needs. Musa is revolutionizing the trucking industry through strategic partnerships, the development of core personnel, and the use of cutting-edge technology. Our inventory system ensures that cargo ends up divided into the right trucks and reaching the correct destination. Our drivers are dedicated to transporting goods efficiently and safely. Contact us today to get started by visiting the website on the screen or by calling 757-756-5246. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. 
and we are interviewing Mr. Brandon Joe Williams, spilling the tea on how it is to be a state national citizen and how to conduct business legally um, without paying taxes and, and to avoid issues in your life. And some of his life experiences is real world. He is real world, y'all. This is not um, this is not the metaverse. He's real deal. Holy Phil um, over here on the Gentleman Style Podcast <laughs> Show. So, uh, Mr. Brandon, uh, tell me, you have your company, the Amnesty Coalition. Tell us, um, you're the founder of the Amnesty Coalition. What is it that you guys specialize? What is it you guys do? Uh, that's just a side project that I do. So, so what the Amnesty Coalition basically what it is 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 I don't want, uh, I don't want this to turn into some kind of like civil war type of thing because obviously when people learn about what I'm teaching, which they already are, I'm not the only guy talking about this. Uh, they get usually pretty angry about it. <laughs> uh, like for example, all the taxes that you pay, they just go to the interest on the loan from the Federal Reserve. They, they, this whole thing where your tax money goes to build bridges, it goes to build roads, it goes to do this, it goes to do that. Not one penny of any tax money you've ever paid in your entire life has gone to absolutely anything except directly to the Federal Reserve. From the from the Federal Reserve, it goes up to the International Monetary Fund. And then from the International Monetary Fund, it goes up to the United Nations. Every single penny. So as people are waking up to this and learning about this, uh, you know, they're generally pretty upset about it, which I understand. So the, the Amnesty Coalition, basically what we do and what we, what we stand for is we stand for, uh, it's a non-bloodshed uh, standpoint on, on what we're going to do now moving forward. Uh, moving forward, uh, the, the whole plan is to, is to you know, the, as per the United States Code and as per what I've already described to you, uh, there's a little bit more information the 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 government is actually a corporation okay and the actual definition of the united states in the in the united states code is a federal corporation a federal corporation that's actually the the definition straight from the definition section of the united states code right so so when did when did our government become a private for-profit corporation, a non-government private for-profit corporation acting as though it's the government? When did that happen? It actually happened in 1871. <laughs> so it's been a long time, right? Now, prior to maybe like 1865, we had an actual real government in America. So what the Amnesty Coalition basically stands for, it stands for let's not kill everybody and kill ourselves and go into some kind of a civil war. Let's just quietly and calmly, uh, you know, give amnesty to all of the people who may be involved in what's going on right now, not even realizing it. There's a lot of people who don't realize what, what they're involved in at all, right? Mm -hmm. And let's just do what we need to do to quietly and friend friendly in a friendly way let's move the current system back to the original system and let's have a real government and let's remove uh private for-profit corporations that act as though they're the government when they're not uh let's let's go back to a real government one that's financed through the people themselves one that the people themselves actually have control over the reason why americans feel like they don't have any control over what the government is doing is because they don't because the government is it's not really a government anymore it's a private for-profit corporation that's run as a corporation for example in california you have california and then you have state of california whenever you sign legal documents or whenever you sign voter registration or whenever you sign a state um a state tax filing it says, are you a resident of state of California? Now, generally state of California, the S is capitalized or all the letters are capitalized. Now, when you, when you research that very, very heavily, what you learn, and I have all the evidence on my website, is that state of California is actually just a sub corporation of United States, which is a corporation. And the corporation state of California 
is actually located in the District of Columbia. So when you say that you're a resident of state of California, what you're saying is, is that you say, I'm living in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. So it's this big, goofy mafia scam that's being run across the whole country, right? So, so the thing is, is that the state of California and California are two completely different places. California is an actual piece of land that's a piece of the original republic of the United States of America. It's not a corporation. State of California is a private for-profit corporation that's located in the District of Columbia. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a wheel round. It's it's pulling you back to it's the pulling original. You back. So so what you have to learn all these different ways in which you're being pulled back into the system. And once you learn these various definitions of these various words, and you learn how they'll change, they'll capitalize one letter, and then boom, now it means something completely different. Once you understand the capitalization and the definitions of the terms, words, and phrases, you can exit the system completely, and uh, you can't really get sucked back into it at all. Because the thing is, is that United States, the private for-profit corporation known as the United States, which is the District of Columbia, they only have jurisdiction over the people who live in or are resident to the District of Columbia. So when you disconnect from the system entirely, they no longer have any jurisdiction over you. They no longer have any jurisdiction over you for criminal purposes. They no longer have any jurisdiction over you for uh, writing you tickets. They no longer have any jurisdiction over you for tax purposes. They no longer have any jurisdiction over you for anything. And they actually admit it openly in the United States Code. Wow, wow, wow. Mr. Brandon, I'm going to pivot here. I'm going to pivot strong here. You have two, you've written two books so far. Yes. Um, and you're on working on your third. If not, it'll probably soon be released. Um, tell us about your, your two books that you recently did that are in uh, out now, available now. Don't be a slave to your clients. And love is a battery. What can readers expect from these books? What's the, what's the goal of these books? Yeah, so this one is uh, Don't Be a Slave to Your Clients right here. And uh, these were written before I started doing all the this state national research. Uh, this book is basically all about how to create uh, marketing and sales lines in your business, where it's like super, super high value uh, marketing and sales lines. So if anybody would like to see uh, one of the projects that I'm doing that I, uh, part I, I own half the company, it's a, a company called Droughtscape. They can go to uh, yardprofessional.com uh, and they can kind of see the kind of marketing that I do. We have uh, all of my businesses or all of the companies that I, that I work with. We have a free educational course associated with everything that I do. So the, any client that's coming into a marketing or a sales funnel, all I do is I basically build out a super highly valuable a free educational course that delivers monstrous amounts of value. And then all I do is just market to feed people into that free course. And then, and then all of my sales prospects are people who come off the other end of that free educational course. There's a lot of other things in the book, but that's the basic spinal cord of how I put together all of my marketing and my sales funnels for my companies and all of how I do that, how I handle phones, how I handle, um, uh, people's documentation, everything's in here, basically uh, everything to create a really, really high value uh, connection with your prospects to completely annihilate price resistance and uh, be able to increase your fees of whatever you're doing over and over and over and over and over and over and people will still be coming uh, to you and, and not to anybody else. You won't really need to sell like a lot of people think of sales, you don't really need to sell anymore. You the, you do all the work on the front end and you just deliver massive amounts of value and you handle them in a certain way. Um, and then on the back end, it's just no price resistance, easy signups. It's it's a very different world, right? That's you the have, first book. You have any stats on it? Like what 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 have you what people typically have seen with after reading your book? Do you create the funnels for them or or you just walk them through how to create the funnels? Uh, uh, 
in this, I don't take on a lot of clients because the I have I have one client that I work with, which is a dental office, and then I have my landscaping company. And and because these funnels are so effective, I don't really need to uh, take on additional clients. I, I have people who would like me to work with them, but I just I my my price tag I keep it very very high because I'm like don't really want to do the work, but I will for a certain price, right? So. Um, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, because I literally just have one or two clients and I make more money than I can possibly spend. So uh, it is a very effective funnel just from that alone. I don't need more than one or two clients. That's how, that's how effective the, the, my funnel is. Okay. So, um, and then love is a battery. Basically what happened was, is I, because I was studying so much about, um, marketing and sales and stuff like that there's a book that i had read there's only you know i've read probably 180 books on marketing and sales and and the best one by far by far is a book called uncensored sales strategies by sydney biddle barros it's a book that's not even in print anymore uh you can only get it used and it's a book that actually dan s kennedy uh, forced her to write. She wasn't actually going to write it, and he forced her to write it. And she was actually a madam, so she was actually she actually ran the largest escort service in all of New York City between the mid '80s, early '90s, in that kind of area, right? And uh, one of the things that she described in her book is there's three types of sales: there's brute force, <laughs> there's consensual, and then there's romance. So she relates the entire sales process to seduction, right? And it's by far the most impactful sales book I've ever read in my entire life. It changed my my entire perspective of the whole world, okay? And it, it's sort of that research, especially that book in particular, uh, got me thinking a lot about seduction and how it relates to marketing and sales. So basically, this book is a book about how to create really, really high intensity, high passion uh, relationships or, or sexual experiences. And it's based off of the research that I did in sales, marketing and seduction. Yes, sir. Thank you for that. So it's, a, it's a, so very powerful. So you touch on two different important aspects. You touch on the relationship aspects so that people can get to a better life, but you also give the tips and secrets and strategies that have done you well in, in sales and marketing um, um, and how you've grown your businesses, several of your businesses and your company. So thank you for that. Thank you for breaking that down. But Mr. Mr. Williams, everything I've heard is everything we've all heard our entire lives. Is it a lie? Have we been basically lied to our entire lives? Is the propaganda that's out there real or should we... Who can we trust if not our own government? Who who can we trust um, out there in the world? Um, you know, government a long, long time ago, it it, it actually did. It, it was designed to assist the people. The people would assist the government, and the government would assist the people. And and sadly, over the years, uh, that has become less and less and less the fact. And now, at this point, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's a direct war between the people and the government and uh most people don't realize that they're in a war uh but they are they are in a war uh i don't recommend fighting the war i recommend uh analyzing the war very very thoroughly just like sun tzu in the art of war analyze the war very very thoroughly know thy enemy uh, uh step back breathe don't get mad don't attack uh, really, really take the time to to analyze the war, analyze the situation. Um, uh, frankly, uh, we we are currently in a World War III. We are currently in a world war, an active world war, no different than World War II. Uh, it is a mostly information economic based war, and it's going on all over the world. It's not just America. So. Um, when you learn that, I, I recommend that you simply educate other people so that other people can realize what the war is, what the terms of the war is, you know, when did it start, what's the deal, who's involved. 
And, and it's not necessarily a war that you really have to involve yourself in at all. The problem is, is that uh, 99% of people, whether they realize it or not, the actions that they're doing on a daily basis are probably contributing to one or the other side of this war without them even knowing. So I guess really the, the most important part is not necessarily fighting the war. It's just realizing how whatever actions that you're doing uh, in your life is feeding one or the other side of the war. And, and you should be conscious of what you're doing and what you're contributing to. And then once you're conscious, then you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize that I was contributing to that. I don't want to contribute to that. I want to contribute to this. And, or just, or just completely disconnect from the system entirely and, and don't even don't even do anything that would really contribute to anything. That's kind of mostly what I recommend people do because uh, truthfully, Washington, D.C. only has jurisdiction in Washington, D.C. Uh, Washington, D.C. is trying so hard and has been very successful to, to, to create this whole scammy system to where they, they have jurisdiction outside of Washington, D.C., by making people sign pieces of paper that say weird things that they don't understand that places them in Washington, D.C. legally. Uh, but the thing is, is that once people wake up to this and they start to change their paperwork and realize what these terms mean, Washington, D.C. can just do their thing in Washington, D.C. and the Republic of the 50 states of America will have its own separate governments for each state or even like, you know, smaller governments for each city. And that's basically where things are going to go in the future. Right. So it's just it's just you guys are over there. You guys are going to do your thing. You know, if you guys want to go crazy or, you know, do whatever you want to do, that's in your jurisdiction. You guys have 10 square miles. You guys have the Washington, D.C. area. You guys are a private for-profit corporation. You guys have government employees that work for you in a private corporate state. You guys can do whatever you want to do. You're over there. I'm over here. And then, and then now that I'm over here and I'm in California, now do, do I want to help create a local government in the original California, the actual state of California, not the corporate state? Uh, that's up to you. I mean, you don't, you don't really have an obligation to you know raise the the original government of your state from the dead right uh if you want to there are a lot of people doing that there is a huge movement right now going on it's called it's generally called assemblies so you have the california assembly you have the i'm assuming new york assembly you have these different state assemblies that are being built right now they have their own juries they have their own uh connection in with the sheriff's office because the sheriff's office is actually like a uh it's sort of half and half that's it gets a little bit weird right so the sheriff's office is actually supposed to be like the main center point the crux between the original government which is the non-corporate government and the corporate government which is the federal government which is washington dc so so the sheriff's office is really where a lot of the action and and kind of everything that i'm talking about is going to take place right so uh the, the sheriff is actually supposed to to take the the local non-corporate government is much higher on the food on the on the on the scale much higher on the important scale than the federal uh corporate government like for example a lot of people know that like a sheriff if he doesn't want to give jurisdiction to the FBI or the CIA, he doesn't have to. He can just say, no, like, go, go after yourself, leave. And they have to go because the, the sheriff is the one who has the, the by far the highest um, jurisdiction of anything occurring in his area. He has to give jurisdiction away to the feds in order for the feds to be able to take over the case. And they, the feds do it through intimidation. They intimidate the sheriff. And then the sheriff said, okay, okay, boys, you're gonna have jurisdiction, and that's how they get it. Well, the sheriff is a political appointee. He's he's not he's not vo he's voted in um via um whoever's exactly. in office. Exactly. So it's not like a traditional police department where exactly um, exactly so yeah. So so the US Marshals 
is basically like the original constitutional like higher level police force and then and then your your more normal level police force is called the sheriff's office and the original term that was used to 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 name police officers because the word police officer doesn't really that's not really true because the, the word police means policy so a police officer is a policy officer a police officer is someone who basically polices the policy of the private for-profit corporation known as united states it's a policy officer so once you're no longer under their policy then the police officer no longer has any jurisdiction over you at all whatsoever, even in their own computer system, right? Yeah. So the original term that was used for police officer is called a peace officer. Oh. So once we move back to the original constitutional government, we're not going to have police officers anymore. We're going to have peace officers. You'll have the peace officers. You'll have the sheriff's office. And then you'll have the U.S. Marshals, and that'll be the way that the that'll be the, the three different levels. There's obviously going to be all the other in between stuff and everything else, but you have the peace officers, which mm -hmm. is the guys on the street. You have the sheriff's office, and then you have the U.S. Marshals office, and that's how it's going to be. Thank you, thank you for that. That's huge. This has been an epic episode here on the Gentleman Style Podcast, um, Mister Mister Brandon. You have shared so many nuggets. Um, on the show today. Yeah. Um, any final nuggets? Any any words of encouragement? Um, it all sounds like doom and gloom here. Um, and I, I, <laughs> I try to be better than that. I try to. to no, no. This it. what I'm doing is exploding. There's a lot of people teaching it. There's a lot of things happening. This is this is huge. It's happening super fast. Millions of people are doing it. Uh, I have a free course that you can do on my website if you want to sign up. It's totally free. It's called the Contract Killer Course, and it basically helps you locate. And, and kill every single one of these contracts. And my website, which your guy, your people are going to find it very, very funny. My website is one stupid fuck dot com. <laughs> gotcha. And it's on the big screen. So for those of you guys want to connect, uh, Mr. Brandon, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you again for giving back in this way and sharing this this insight, this knowledge. I appreciate you, sir. Um, very welcome. Yes, sir. Um, what's next? What's in store for you? What you got coming next? Besides book number three? Uh, well, I'm just working every single day. I do a lot of research, man. Research, research, research. I'm, I'm digging through the United States Code. I'm digging through the Uniform Commercial Code. I'm digging through everything, looking at definitions of words. I have multiple friends that are doing the same thing. So we have a blast. I know it doesn't sound like it's a blast, but boy, we have a blast. It's it's like, um, it's it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun doing this. It's it's a lot of excitement, a lot of emotion. It's like, oh my god, look what I found. This is going to change the world. It's it's a it's a big deal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Connect, 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 connect with Mr. Brandon and his team on what they're doing. This is this is huge. This is is interesting. This is a movement, and and it sounds like it's been around for a while. Um, thank you again for giving insight to what it is you're doing and and what we should be focusing on, what we should be paying attention to. I appreciate you, sir. You're very welcome. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. And thank you, my audience, for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been informational. And I hope this has been inspirational in so many different ways. Like I always end every show, we got to let Mr. Brandon go. Oh, sorry, my phone was blowing up. We got to let Mr. Brandon go. He's about to take over the world, <laughs> create the, the, new, the new dynasty. So the, new old, the new old America. Yeah, the new old America. So thank you all for tuning in. Like I always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is the Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show and Mr. Brandon Joe Williams signing off. Love you guys. Bye.